next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911. I just knew instantly that he'd been shot. One careless shot. I was totally confident that the gun was empty. Threatens a young boy's life. His lips were awful blue. On Rescue 911. <laughs> Tragedy often strikes when we least expect it. Late in the afternoon of September 12, 1989, in Rio Vista, California, Cheryl Murray and her children had returned home from a boating trip and were enjoying the long summer evening. Watch for the cars! It was a Tuesday night, and Jared and the boys were outside riding their hikes. And Jared at the time was only six years old. Across the way, 17-year-old Kevin Stewart was working in his backyard. My dad had told me that I needed to clean out the backyard. So as I was weed eating, I found my old BB gun. All in all, the gun could have been outside for a year. I cocked it and fired it, and it seemed that it was empty. I repeated that a few more times. And then when I knew it was empty, I went in the house. And I started off in the family room shooting flies. It doesn't take the BB, just the charge of air. I went to the front of the house to look for more flies to shoot at. And I was totally confident that the gun was empty. I heard the pop of a BB gun. I heard your gasp. I just knew instantly that he'd been shot. He looked like he was scared. He just kind of laid there, kind of listless. I didn't believe anybody would believe me when I told them that I was shooting flies with the air. So I hid the gun and tried to make it so that no one would know I did it. And all I was thinking was, what, did I, what have I done? Cheryl's calls for help brought neighbors to the scene, including Janae Tussey, who was studying to be a nurse. Cheryl put Jared in my hands, and I looked down at him, and the first thing I realized is that his lips were awful blue. They were really blue. I'm gonna lay you down, Jared. I wanna see what's going on. Okay. Can you hear me, Jared? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. And when I pulled up his shirt, then I saw the hole, the entry hole, right over his heart. And it was pumping, it seemed like, at the same time pace that his heart was beating, there was a little squirt of blood coming out. They loaded Jared into a neighbor's car and rushed him to the nearest fire station less than two miles away. Jared was starting to go into shock. He was losing a lot of blood. His pupils were dilating. His body was shaking. Okay, which was the one in the red? Raphael. Raphael. By talking about the Ninja Turtles, it gave me a chance to take his mind off of being shot. And I didn't want him to lose consciousness. That was the most important part. Keep your eyes open for me, OK, Jared? Jared, you're doing good. Mommy's right here, OK? Within five minutes, they arrived at the Rio Vista Fire Department. I ran in with him, and I started yelling, this child's been shot. He's been shot. We barged our way right into their living quarters. Paramedic Sue Hurst immediately assessed Jared's injuries. He was very pale. Um, his skin was moist. And he had a very small hole right above his left nipple on his chest. What happened, you know? I don't. Uh, the mom was just screaming that he's been shot. Okay, they took a risk. They could have driven to the fire station, and we could have been out on a call. If the family had dialed 911, we would have had all the players there in a coordinated effort from the very beginning. Night. 
It's 2 a.m. in New Orleans, and emergency medical teams act quickly to save lives all across town. Follow each story from impact to the ER. Don't miss the critical hour, tonight on Discovery Health Channel. If faced with danger, what would you do? Would you react in time? See ordinary citizens become heroes. Rescue 911 continues next on Discovery Health Channel. Jared, right. I kept saying, Jared, you're, you're going to be all right. I'm right here. It's okay. What's your first name, hon? And then I'd turn around and I would just be hysterical. And I'm like, oh, God, please don't take my baby. Please don't take my baby. I don't know how much mothers love their kids, but I think I love them way too much. Well, they're all very special in their own way. But for some reason, Jared is very special. Jared was admitted to North Bay Medical Center, where he was treated by emergency physician Phil Moody. Okay, we got equal breaths on both sides. And there's air coming from the wound every time he breathes. With each breath, there was a little bubble of air, which indicated that whatever it was penetrated deep into his lung, and uh, this air was leaking out of his lung. Hey, Jared. Let me get an X-ray here of your chest. X-rays revealed that a small area of one of Jared's lungs had collapsed, and the BB pellet was still lodged inside his body. They said it looks like it went in right here, and it ricocheted off of things, and it's just sitting underneath his arm, and, you know, we probably won't even have to remove it. Everything's gonna be okay. And so we were, like, really relieved. Cheryl spent the night at the hospital with her son. He woke up real early in the morning, and it was still dark out, and he said, my arm hurts. And I felt his arm, and his arm felt really cold, and I knew that something wasn't right. And at that point, it was decided to do an angiogram. You can see that the flow of the, of the dye comes through here and, and literally stops. Well, we should normally see a, a vessel like this continuing down the arm and spreading out with all the smaller blood vessels to the muscle. And he said, looks like it's lodged against the artery, and we're going to have to go in and remove it because he could risk losing his arm. But the surgeon who performed the operation wasn't prepared for what he found. And he was like, you're not going to believe this. And he, you know, he told us that it's just a miracle. He's never seen anything like it before in his life. The BB had actually penetrated the chest through the lung into the left ventricle of the heart and was pumped out with the next contraction of blood and just shot out into the artery. He, he was very fortunate in that the BB didn't go straight up into the carotid artery where he might have had a stroke and died. Somebody was watching over him. Jared was hospitalized for seven days and released without any permanent injury. Kevin came forward the next day and admitted that he had accidentally shot the boy. When I finally told him that I did do it, I felt really relieved, like a pressure was lifted off me. I was never ever mad at Kevin. I think Kevin's nice. I'm happy. There's no hard feelings. I didn't want him to think I was some kind of mean person and would try to hurt someone intentionally like that. Two years later, Jared's older brother, Brandon, looks back on what happened. That's good. He's a good guy. I love him a lot. When he came home, he was spoiled right from getting all the presents in the hospital, and he was spoiled right. And, but he used Jared. Took him a couple months and broke him back in. People should just treat BB guns like they're a firearm. They need to realize that they're powerful. They penetrate. They kill. They are a firearm. They are not a toy. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please. 